is Prabhupada's appearance day and me and my brother are going to tell a short story about little Prabhupada when he was little. Now let's start. Namo.
अष्टोत्तर शत श्री ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृद्ध की जय नाम चालीसलालिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा गिरधारी भगवान की जय श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र मैया की जय श्री गौरिताय की जय श्रीला प्रभुपाद व्यास पूजन की जय गौर प्रेम ऑल ग्लोरिस टू द सम्बल डिवोटीज हरे कृष्णा ऑल ग्लोरिस टू द सम्बल डिवोटीज हरे कृष्णा ऑल ग्लोरिस टू द सम्बल डिवोटीज हरे कृष्णा ऑल ग्लोरिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू द लोटस फीट ऑफ श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांग ऑल ग्लोरिस टू श्रीला प्रभुपाद ऑल ग्लोरिस टू श्रीला गुरुदेव Jai Shri Prabhupada's appearance day ki! Jai! So, welcome back to another session of Kids Krishna Katha. And on this auspicious day of Shri Prabhupada's appearance day, we are going to be discussing a little bit about his life and how much that he has done for us. For if he had not, if he had not come, if he had not done what he has done, then we would not be here. So the least we can do is this and please him by pleasing krishna so today my brother uh, kishori sorry my brother revant and my sister kishori radhika will be presenting two stories of when prabhupad was very small as my sister said so uh, prabhupad's uh, father was gol mohan de and his mother was rajini devi and his name was abhay charan and so uh, my sister will say her story first wish her best of luck come so wish her hare krishna again so abhay when he was little he was playing with his friends then he found a what he ate, he was eating on watermelon then he accidentally swallowed one seed in his tummy and then his friends were making fun of him like this haha <laughs> you ate a seed you ate a seed you got big tree in your tummy so i ran to his mom and said my friend said that I am going to grow a tree in my tummy because I swallowed a watermelon seed. His mom said that no you won't. Your friends are joking. It's actually not true. And that's the end of the story. That's what I can say. And that's what I remember from it. I did remember another one. Super sharp key. Yeah. Give a big round of applause. Thank you. So, what we learn from this story is that we should always clarify with our parents on what on whatever anybody says and whatever we doubt. So we should never hesitate to ask our parents for anything. Now, my brother will come. He's feeling a little bit nervous, but he's going to be great. Come on. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> One day, um, Shrila Prabhupada um, uh, was feeling very sick. Then uh, Doctor Bose came and said that we need to feed Abhay some uh, some chicken soup. Gormohan became shocked and said, "No, we can't cook any chicken or meat in our food." Doctor Bose said, "It doesn't matter. We can cook chicken soup. I can cook chicken soup in my house." he brought the chicken soup and and uh like gave it to propad soon as propad smelt it he started vomiting <coughs> oh, uh, and and then dr bo said no need and then after a few days propad became um better so what do we learn from this story so we learn that uh meat is not healthy for us prashadam is nice and good for us and healthy and prabhupad has proved it hari bol shila prabhupad ki jai big round of applause for 
everyone! Very, very good. <laughs> so we learned from the story, as he says, that we don't eat meat and it is bad for our health as well. And the prasadam is sufficient and also very tasty. And we need nothing else. Very good job, both of you. All right. So here is a verse from Canto 3, chapter 25, text 21. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Athojaya Mudirahit Nashta Prayeshva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai so, let's start the verse. Titikshavakarunikaha suridha sarva dehinam ajata shatra vashantaha sadhava sadhu bhushanaha Titikshava, tolerant. Karunika, merciful. Suridha, friendly. Sarva dehinam, to all living entities. Ajata shatra vaha, inimical to none. Shantaha, peaceful. Sadhava, abiding by scriptures. Sadhu Bhushana, adorned with sublime characteristics. The symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies. He is peaceful. He abides by the scriptures, and all his characteristics are sublime. So this verse completely fits in with Prabhupada's personality and qualities. Prabhupada was, Prabhupada was tolerant. He was so tolerant. He was merciful and he was friendly. So this perfectly fits his personality and all his characteristics are sublime. He had no fault. He was expert. And he did everything with so much faith and devotion. Right from when he was a small child to when he became an adult and then he went to preach to the West, he was completely Krishna conscious and surrendered unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When Abhay was small, he used to see his father worshipping the Radha Krishna deities and ringing the, uh, the bell early in the morning. And Abhay also wanted to do the same. So he asked his father if he could have a pair of deities, just like their deities. And so Gaur Mohande was delighted and he purchased these deities and gave them to Abhay. And Abhay treasured them and cherished them. And every day he would offer them bhoga and give them arti. He never neglected them and treated them just like how his father treated him, how his father treated the deities. A, a small regular, a small um, ordinary child, they, they don't want deities, they want toys and um, toy guns and, and animals and they want all these things. But Abhai, he was different. He wanted deities. And from a very small age, he started worshipping them. When he was a little older, at the age of about uh, eight, uh, six to eight, he, he held a Rathyatra festival. So first what happened was he asked his father that he wanted to have a cart. But they didn't have any cart. So um, Abhai had heard of the big carts in Jagannath Puri which each held a separate deity, Jagannath, Beldevs and Subhadra, and he wanted to do the same. So he was asking his father. So his father and he left to go to the market to purchase a cart. But whichever, whoever seller and vendor they went to, 
the cart was way too expensive. They could not afford it. So they were very despairingly going home when they met a lady. The old lady invited them into her home and, and she asked them uh, what they were doing. And Abhay, uh, Abhay's father, Gaur Mohan, explained that they were out looking for a cart, a Rathyatra cart, but that they couldn't find it and because it was too expensive, they couldn't afford it. And so the lady then smiled and then showed them something very, very wonderful. It was an exquisitely made cart. And she offered it, offered it to them. So Gaur Mohan gladly accepted it, thanked her, and they took the cart home. When they got home, Gaur Mohan and Abhay both started to paint the cart very decorously, very carefully. Normally, normally little children just like to mess about with their paintings, but no, Abhay very artistically was were doing was doing deaf strokes and it was very very beautiful when the cart was finally ready he got Jagannath Baldevas and Subhadra ready too and then he informed all his friends and their mothers that he was going to be holding a Rathyatra ceremony and so he requested all the mothers to prepare lots of food like sweet rice and laddus and preparations made in ghee, rice and vegetables, dal and sabji and all these items which are there in the real Rathyatra festival. And so the mothers happily agreed and set about making the food, the bhoga. And so finally the day came when the Rathyatra festival was going to start. So um, Abhai leading taking the lead, all his friends were behind him, were, some friends were playing the kartal, some were playing the mridanga, and all of the parents and children were pulling the cart, and they were all singing loudly, Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra, and this continued just like the same procession in Jagannath Puri. And everybody was so jubilant and ecstatic. And the procession was just like the one in Jagannath Puri. There was no difference. Everybody was so happy. And so like this from Abhay, from such a small age, was very attracted to Krishna and completely surrendered. Now, we see that all devotees, they go, to, they go through st some struggle. And Prabhupada, he went through so much struggle to when he was an adult and in the pharmacy business to when he, he went to preaching. His whole life was made of struggles and disasters and problems. But he never came away from Krishna consciousness. He never gave up. He always persevered. He was so determined. And he was, and he had so much faith in Krishna. So he faced so so many struggles. Uh, even in his in his material life, he faced so many struggles by his family. His family couldn't accept that he was a devotee, and they were totally not into Krishna consciousness. They were so away from it. So. Prabhupada materially didn't find any support from his, from his wife or children at all. And, and, one of, uh, and as, a, as a pharmacist also, one of, one, of his, um, one of his buildings was burnt down, his pharmacy department. Uh, but he, he, he started again. He moved to a new place and he started all over again. So in this way, he persevered. He, he uh, maintained for his family. He got enough for his family. In 1922, his friend took him to see his spiritual master, his soon-to-be spiritual master, 
Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And Prabhupada was very unsure because his father used to invite so-called sadhus to their home. But they were just frauds. And so Prabhupada did not know what to expect. But he still went along with the friend. And he was very impressed with what he saw. Um, so here in your Everwell Visha, there, there are the exact words. So 1992, 1922, he met with his spiritual master. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur then said, You are educated young men. Why don't you preach Lord Chaitanya's message throughout the world? Prabhupada then said, Who will hear your Chaitanya's message? We are, are, we are in a dependent country. First, India must become independent. How can we spread India's culture if we are under British rule? Shri Bhakti Siddhanta replied that Krishna consciousness didn't have to wait for a change in Indian politics, nor was it dependent on who ruled. Krishna consciousness was so important that it could not wait. So Abhay was struck by his boldness and his truth and how he had a mission and a goal. And so he took these words to heart. And uh, during the next few years, he tried his best to do what his spiritual master was saying. So during the next few years, his, he uh, tried to print Back to Godhead magazines. And they didn't go very well. He faced so much struggle. Um, his life is such a str his his life was so full of problems. Uh, it will take us so much more long to discuss it. So, yes, he faced through so many problems. He wanted he wanted everyone to see that there is a path that th we can take, which is of devotional service, and we will be freed from all this material anxiety, material burdens. But nobody was willing to accept it. He tried to get in contact with many of the of many of India's big leaders and politicians and influencers, um, but his replies were always very discouraging. But Prabhupada himself never got discouraged. He always persevered. Um, so then, we will fast fast forward to um, when he when he was about to take his trip to New York. So we will see how that happened. So this was the time when he had already gotten initiated. He had taken, he had also taken sannyas. So he took sannyas in 19, he, sorry, he took the vow of um, Varna, Varna Prast in 1950. So this is when he was a full-fledged devotee and he had uh, completely um, separated himself from his family and now he, his whole, his whole uh, life was only engaged in Krishna's service. So his, mas his spiritual master had told him to go to the west and preach. So he, he had taken these words to heart and he really wanted to fulfill his spiritual master's mission. And so he was determined to find a way to do it. So he contacted, um, he he contacted Srimati Muraji, and who was in charge, who was in charge of the cargo ship that was going to be traveling to New York. And because Prabhupada hardly had any money, he had to have some ch cheap, very cheap. Um, some traveling uh, resources um, and so he requested her to give him a ticket to go but Srimati Maharaji was very shocked because now he was 69 he was 69 years old and he wanted to go in a cargo ship cargo ships are not meant for human traveling cargo ships are just meant for uh, importing things from one country to another so just taking um, 
uh, things, just objects. <laughs> not, it's not suitable, it's not meant for humans. But Prabhupada insisted. And finally, Srimati Muraji gave in, seeing his determination, and he was given a ticket. And so on the day, he boarded the cargo ship. And the ship's name was the Jaladuta. And so he boarded the ship. And do you know how many days he traveled in that cargo ship for? 35 days. We now, we nowadays travel from one country to another and it hardly takes 30 hours. And Prabhupada traveled in a cargo ship for 35 days. Can you imagine? On the Atlantic Ocean. But uh, on the um, on the ship itself, he observed he observed Janmashtami. So so he prepared lots of uh, prasadam and he offered it to the captain and whoever uh, uh, whoever the resident residents were on the cargo ship. And the next day was his but was his own birthday where he turned 70 his 70th birthday so that same day the ship arrived at Cochin and Bhakti Vedanta Swami's trunks of Srimad Bhagavatam volumes which had been shipped from Bombay were load, loaded on board by the 23rd the ship had put out to the Red Sea uh, Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta Swami encountered great difficulty he wrote in his diary, rain, seasickness, dizziness, headache, no appetite, vomiting. In two days, in two days, he suffered two heart attacks. But he tolerated this, the difficulty. So remember, tolerance was one of the qualities that we saw in the shloka. He tolerated the difficulty, meditating on the purpose of his mission. And he said, that if this happened a third time, he would surely not survive. On the night of the second day, he had a dream. Lord Krishna, in his many forms, was rowing a boat. And he told Bhaktivedanta Swami that he should not fear, but should come along. Bhaktivedanta Swami felt assured of Lord Krishna's protection. And the violent attacks did not recur. So he had so much faith in Lord Krishna. So when he, when he went, so he, so he, he went in the cargo ship. He traveled in the cargo ship for 35 days and he suffered two heart attacks. What must that have been for him? Can you place yourself in any one of these situations? Try to put yourself in his shoes and think what would you have done? Also, when he was in the U.S., when he finally went there, he faced so many problems. In the U.S., his uh, typewriter, his um, his recorder, um, and and all of his manuscripts, the books that he had been translating, Srimad Bhagavatam, and and some other books as well, those manuscripts they were all stolen, not just once but twice. But what did Prabhupada do? He, he started all over again. He persevered. He was such a strong man. Just place yourself in his shoes and think, would I have done the same? Personally, I think if even one of these incidents had occurred to me, <laughs> I would have left Krishna consciousness. But what did Prabhupada do? He set such an, a great example for all of us. And, and after all this, in the next 12 years, when he reached New York, in the next 12 years, he was, he was met with a huge success. A success that had not been seen for hundreds of years. Um, something that um, many other yogis or... Um, materialistics had not been able to done had able to do 
like many people had come to the had come to New York, the U.S. to try to uh, preach about what they thought was uh, religion and all that stuff, but not even one person had succeeded. But here, Prabhupada had done so much. In the next 12 years, he established 108 temples. He initiated thousands of disciples. He opened so many ISKCON centers all around the world. He translated so many books in many different languages with the help of his disciples. He did so much. And we need to thank him for all that he has done. Now there are Gurukuls and Hare Krishna schools all over the world. There are so many organizations, book distribution, book distribution um, committees, and there are just so many things going on. And we really have to be grateful for Prabhu, to Prabhupada for doing all this, for going to the West, for preaching, for persevering. He could have easily turned back. In fact, when during the first few weeks when he came to New York, every day he went back to the dock and he used to ask and he used to ask the person selling the tickets that when when is the next ship going back to India? And he used to think that I will stay for some time here, but I will return soon. So every day he used to come and he used to um, and, his, and he used to watch the ships and he used to and he used to think that Krishna you have made me come you have made me come here now you you do what you want to do with me I have come here so now I will do whatever it, whatever, whatever, whatever it takes to fulfill my spiritual master's mission so he went through so much and whatever I just said, this is just a small pinch of what his actual life was like. I haven't hit so many points too, but yes, Srila Prabhupada went through so much. But he wasn't an ordinary person. He was a, he was a very, he was an empowered person who came, who came from the spiritual world to deliver, to deliver us and to uh, bring back Krishna consciousness into the world. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had said that my Senapati will come and my name will be heard. Krishna's name will be heard in every town and village. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Shla Prabhupada Ki Jai! So, we should be extremely grateful to Prabhupada for all that he has done for us. Another thing, oh, one thing I forgot to say. Um, while he was trying to attract uh, people to Krishna consciousness, or when he was, when he was in one of his uh, uh, apart apartments, um, he, he, he just, he kept on changing many apartments. So when he was in one of the apartments, um, he used to give he used to give lectures every day and he used to have love feasts love feasts on every Sunday where he used to personally cook prasadam and serve it to all who came to all who wanted it so he used to, he used to personally cook for hundreds of people and soon more and more people started coming but do you know what the famous what was the famous of all from his, from from his um, uh, prashad, it was his iskon bullets, the laddus and the gulab jamuns and the rasgullas. Those were the iskon bullets that attracted all the people, and uh, he used to he used to give them generously. Um, <laughs> Every day, he used to also keep a jar outside, and anybody who came, they could just help themselves to it. So these, so we also use these iskon bullets to attract people, and so we are using Shri Prabhupada's example. So now it is time for the quiz, 
I hope you were listening properly because there are going to be a few questions from the story. Now, what the first question is, what was the name of the cargo ship in which Prabhupada went to the US? So remember I stated the name? So what was the name of the cargo ship in which Prabhupada went to the US? I'll just start recording my answers. Um, one really interesting thing that I'd like to add is that um, often people wonder why uh, such bad things happen to good people or why they have to go through so much. If they're Krishna's devotees, Krishna should take care of them, right? And they should not be going through all these problems. Um, so, one or two years back, Praneshwar Prabhu very nicely explained this, and I, I really, uh, it was it was really helpful. And so this is what he said: This is why we all go through problems. So, for a non-devotee, a non-devotee goes through problems for connection. So they go through problems. So that the more problems they get, they can they can try to find what is causing the problems and what the solution can be, and so they can connect to Krishna. So they can ultimately connect with Krishna. Okay, I'm just gonna do the answers. Okay. So one point, one point, one point, and okay. Oh, Kevala. Hare Krishna. Okay. So, the second question is... This is a little tricky question. When Prabhupada established ISKCON, how many purposes did he put forth? So, when you establish like an organization, you have to put some purposes behind it, right? So... What, how many reasons did Prabhupada put forth? I don't have the book with me right now, but there is um, there is there is a passage in which there um, there are the there there are the reasons, the purposes in which Prabhupada put forth. So here are, here are the options. A. Did he put three reasons? B. Was it seven reasons? Or C. Was it five reasons? Oh, quick one. Keshava, thank you. All right. Okay, um, number three, when did Srila Prabhupada meet his spiritual master? A, was it 1931, C, was it 1922, or B, was it 1923? So while you are typing in your answers, um, so we now know that non-devotees, so general, so people in general, go through problems for connection. Now people who are devotees who are like practicing Krishna consciousness, they go through problems t for purification, so they can pur purify themselves even more. So. Uh, get deep, deeply, get more deeply involved with Krishna consciousness. All right, so some answers. Um, yep, recording them. 
So, so practicing devotees go through problems for purification. Now, senior devotees, so very advanced devotees, devotees like Prabhupada and all his disciples, they are all senior devotees. They go through problems for glorification. So, when people, when people go through problems, and, but they still persevere and they achieve so much, then naturally they are praised. They are glorified because they've done so much, right? They have achieved so much. So in the same way, devotees, uh, advanced devotees, they go through these problems for glorification and so that people like us can, can be inspired to them and want to do more um, in Krishna consciousness. Okay. Uh, yes, I can see Sudhara Mataji's answers. I'm recording them, Mataji. I have your name right here. Um, so I've got Vishnupati Mataji's answer. I've got I've got Kevala's answer, and I've also got Sudhara Mataji. Okay. Now. Number four, when was Prabhupada born? A. 1896, B. 1889, or C. 1898. So when was Prabhupada born? So, non-devotees go through problems for connection. Practicing devotees go through problems for purification and advanced devotees go through problems for glorification. Alright, one answer. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please comment down below. So and I will do my best to answer it. If you would like to share anything about Prabhupada also, then then please do. We would all like to hear something about him. Okay. Anybody else? So when was Prabhupada born? A. 1896 B. 1889 or C. 1898 Okay, we'll move on to the next question. This is the last question. What was the first book that Prabhupada wrote? A. Easy Journey to Other Planets B. The Science of Self-Realization or C. Srimad Bhagavatam So which was the first book that he wrote? So the options are A. Easy Journey to Other Planets B. The Science of Self-Realization or C. Srimad Bhagavatam Okay, got my answer. Anybody else?
So these are just a few facts about um, Prabhupada. So he left his home in 1915 and became a Varna, Varna Prast. He married Radharani Devi in 1918. He left his body on in, 19, in 1977 in Vrindavan. And, and he was born on September 19, 1896, Kolkata, India, the day after Janmashtami, Nandotsav. Okay. Um, yep, I've got your answers. Okay, thank you so much for participating in the quiz. Oh, one more answer. All right. Um, so today we we learned we get three things from from today's discussion um, three things that uh, three qualities that Prabhupada had so the first is commitment in sadhana Prabhupada every day um, he he got he used to get up at at 1 a.m. translate all his translate his books then he used to then he used to do his chanting go for Mangalarti and then he used to go for his uh, morning walk and the devotees say that Prabhupada used to walk so fast um, and that he didn't leave any uh, footprints in the sand uh, and then he used to come back, have a little bit of prasadam, and uh, and then and then he used to uh, again chant some rounds, or used to translate his books, um, and then and then and then he used to uh, record himself. Um, I don't know the exact details, but he used to do so much service every single day. Um, and then he used to take a little bit of rest, uh, and 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 again he used to just repeat this process every single day, and he translated for such a long time, and and every day he chanted sixty four rounds. So yes, that is commitment to sadhana, and if he can do so much, we should also do at least a little bit. So we should chant. We should go to the temple, which unfortunately now we can't do, of course. Um, but then we can always we can always do whatever we whatever we can at home. So for people for so like you and me, Kevala, and us us all actually, we can try to um, make new recipes, um, discover new recipes, and make them, experiment, and offer them to Lord Krishna. Or you can do something creative and offer to Krishna. So commitment to sadhana, we must do our chanting and we must always be in the association of devotees. However much we can, we must scrutinizingly study Prabhupada's books and obviously follow the regulative principles and follow Prabhupada's instructions to please him and please Lord Krishna. So. That's the first thing that we learn. Second thing we learn is Prabhupada's perseverance. So whatever obstacles may cross the path, I've said this so many times, but we must always just move forward. Um, so if somebody says something um, mean to us or something that we may feel is mean or harmful to us, we must just ignore, ignore, ignore it. But if we can't ignore it, and if we feel if it, it, it is a bigger problem, then we, you, you can always go to your parents and whoever you trust around you. So we must always persevere and be determined. So, so, I'm, so I'm being determined that I will finish my rounds every single day or that I will 
read a certain amount of pages every single day from Prabhupada Leelamrita. So we have to persevere, just like Prabhupada did. Prabhupada, pr Prabhupada persevered so, so, so much. And as, as my uh, sister said in her story, that we must, if we have any doubts, we must always clarify with our parents if anything comes up to stop us in our determination. That is the second thing. The third thing we learnt is faith. Faith in Krishna and his devotees. So, it's not really a quality that we can um, uh, practice to develop, really, but it, it comes over time. Just, so, just by sincerely doing our sadhana, chanting, then it, it uh, slowly, slowly, it affects our whole life and we start to see things from a different point of view and it really, really helps us. So Prabhupada had so much faith in Krishna. Um, on, the, on, the, in, on the cargo ship, he had so much faith in him. His, his life was, his, was, was, um, was in Krishna's hands at the, at the time. But he had so much faith in Krishna. So, first thing is commitment to sadhana. Second thing is perseverance and determination. And the third thing is faith. So, if we can do the first, first, if we can do the first thing, achieve the first thing, and the second and third will come by itself. And we will see that we are getting attracted to Krishna consciousness more and more. So on this auspicious day, we have to do all that we can. Um, so we, the uh, Balram's appearance day was last to last week. Janmashtami was yesterday. Today is Prabhupada's appearance day, and Radhashtami is along the way. So I thought that we are going to be will focus on these topics, these few topics, the next couple of weeks. So today we covered Prabhupada's appearance day and so the next few weeks we'll go on to the on to each of the different personalities. Thank you all for being here and supporting me to do this every week. Um, please forgive me if I made any mistakes or said anything wrong. Um, and I will see you again next week. Thank you so much for participating in the quiz. Oh, the quiz! So the quiz winners are... Vishnupadi Mataji and Sudharma Mataji. Congratulations! Hare Krishna! Thank you so much for participating in the quiz. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Thank you very, very much. And we must also thank Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai! Thank you so, so much. Hare Krishna!